What's up guys, Alvaro here and welcome to the bilingual stock market channel again. On this channel we talk about the markets but we do it in English and Spanish as well so you can pick your preferred language and in this video and as I do it Mondays through Thursdays I want to make a quick stock market update so I want to break down some technicals going over S&P 500 and the Nasdaq 100 but also breaking down from a technical standpoint four stocks that tomorrow are going to be on the very top of my personal watch list so with that further ado let's get right into the video and today we had another bloodbath in the market maybe not a bloodbath guys but we had a solid red day with the four major indices going down and with the 11 sectors that trade inside the S&P 500 also going down so the Russell 2000 went down 0.94% Nasdaq went down 0.44% Dow Jones was the worst performing index out of the bunch by far going down 1.59% and the S&P 500 went down 1.19% so listen up guys in the case of the S&P 500 September and finally September is gone uh, it's going to be gone tomorrow but today uh, let's say that officially we closed the month of September so this month of, of September has been the worst month for the S&P 500 since March of last year guys that's the month in which the COVID-19 crash occurred and in the case of the Nasdaq this index had its worst month since September of last year so we had a nasty uh, month of September and from a seasonality standpoint we we'll still have 15 more rough days ahead of ourselves and from a seasonality standpoint obviously from October 15 up to the end of this year up to December 31st or the last days of December we are going to have the best uh, let's say season of the year for the markets we will see what that plays out like and something that i wanted to point out if we take a look something that i wanted to point out in this video guys if we take a look at the s p 500 and the nasdaq as of now or the nasdaq 100 in the case of the s p we are talking about a five percent pullback nothing to be really worried about and in the case of the nasdaq we are talking about a, a six percent drop something like that so anyone any bear out there would say yeah well you know this is just a soft pullback we are just talking about five percent in the s p and six percent in, in the case of the nasdaq however guys however guys inside the indices there is a lot but i mean a lot of pain we find a bunch of stocks that are trading 10 15 or 20 percent of its highs so when we take a look at the s p being five percent down as of now of or for five percent of the highs and in the case of the nasdaq we see that the nasdaq is six percent of the highs that's not the real picture guys inside these two indices there is a lot of pain we have a lot of oversold stocks we have a bunch of stocks in a severe oversold condition and there is a lot of pain so in my opinion if we keep on going lower and in uh, needless to say in an aggressive way we are going to be getting closer to a bottom because we already have a sizable correction inside the indices even though the s p is only five percent of the highs and the nasdaq is only six percent of the highs when it comes to the sectors that trade inside the s p 500 red day all across the board the 11 sectors closed today in negative territory led by communication services which went down sorry led by industrials Com communication services was on the flip side the best performing sector today however communication services went down today 0.31% and the worst performing sector was industrials which went down 2.15% and in the case of the most important sectors the tech sector went down today 0.76% we saw some sort of recovery when it comes to tech stocks out there some of them and not really a lot but uh, let's say that relative to most of the stocks that trade let's say inside the dow jones the tech sector was not really uh, hit 
a lot. Let's just put it that way. So the tech sector went down today 0.76%. And the financial sector, another very important sector, went down today 1.60%. And talking about the financial sector, let's go ahead and take a look at the good old 10-year treasury yield, which went down today and closed today's trading session at 1.52%. Did the financial sector go down today because of the 10 year treasury yield? I don't know, guys. That's a, uh, you know, uh, that's a puzzle piece. It's uh, on the table. Uh, Tesla finally went uh, down today. Tesla held pretty well during the last two trading sessions and it ended up going down today five bucks. So we still need to keep a close watch on the 10, the 10 year treasury yield, guys. 1.55%. Put this down on a sticky note. If the 10 year treasury yield happens to burst above 1.55%, that is going to be very, but very negative for tech oriented stocks. However, the 10 year treasury yield went down today and the industrial sector went down today. So I don't know, guys. The, the, the bond market is sometimes very difficult uh, to be figured out. But what I know for sure is that we need to uh, keep a close watch on 1.55% in the case of the 10-year Treasury yield. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the S&P 500. And in the case of the S&P, and as I said in the introduction of this video, this index went down today 1.19% and it closed today's trading session at 4,307 points. So let me pull up here quickly the one hour chart and take a look, guys. So on Monday of last week, the bears failed at 4,305 4, points and the low of today's trading session was actually... 4305 so and let me i am i am curious guys because to, uh, it is 424 so the yeah the the futures markets already closed but i want to take a look at the behavior of the futures of the s p did we break no we didn't break uh, 4293 which was the low of last um of last monday or sorry of monday of last week so we still have a line in the sand for the bears over there, guys. Obviously, let me pull up once again here the one hour shut down. Let me pull up the SPX. So the most important task in the case of the bears of the S&P 500 tomorrow is going to be taking on 4305, guys. That's the task that they need to carry out tomorrow. So let me pull up here. The 4-hour chart and the relative strength index of the S&P is at 27 points. Let me zoom in here. And can the bears break 4,300 tomorrow? Yeah, they can. And mind you guys, if we happen to break 4,300 tomorrow to the downside, which, as you guys know, acted as lower support on, last, uh, on Monday of last week, but we are also talking about a former area of support that acted as such back on July 8th, and it also acted as resistance back on June 29. So if we break 4,300 to the downside, which is pretty much in the cards, then the next important area of lower support is going to be at 4,270. 4,270 is a previous area of support of late June. If we break 4,300 tomorrow, this is my opinion. I could be mistaken, but this is my personal opinion. And if we see a flush down to 4270, the relative strength index of the S&P is going to be very, but very low, even lower than 27 points. We might see the RSI of the S&P at, I don't know, 20 points, 18 points. So if we happen to see a flush down, an aggressive drop tomorrow, down to 4270, we are very likely to see a bounce back up from that area. And in the case of the bulls, the bulls, I don't look in any good as of now. The most important task for the bulls is going to be recovering 44.23. We are talking about a 120 point uh, push to the upside. That isn't gonna. That isn't. It is. That's. That is very unlikely to happen in one single day. 
44.23 is a previous area of resistance in which the bulls of the S&P failed on three occasions, and it is an area of overhead of previous overhead resistance that coincides with the 180 SMA on the four-hour chart. And obviously, guys, something that is worth pointing out over here is this clear death cross. You guys can see the 50 SMA that is about to cross below the 180 SMA on the four hour chart. So if tomorrow this death cross happens to unfold, yeah, we could see a flush down to 40, as I just said, 40 to 70. But at 40 to 70, I think that we are very likely to see at least a relief rally in the case of the S&P, but no doubt about it, the bears are in total control of the S&P 500. And in the case of the NDX, the Nasdaq 100 went down today 0.43% and it closed today's trading session at 14,689 points. Relative strength index of the Nasdaq 100, 24 points. So the NDX is very oversold. We can make the case that on Monday of last week, the RSI of the NDX dropped down to 19 points. So we could still see more a downside over here so let me zoom in here on the four hour shirt and the bears managed to close below 14,780 points which was which is a very important area of lower support for the bulls of the ndx so the next important area of support in the case of the ndx is going to be 14,580 points which happens to be a former area of support back from early July and also a previous area of overhead resistance back from late June. So that, that would be the next task for the bears of the NDX. And since the RSI is already very low, and as I just said, in the case in the in the case of the S and P guys, if we happen to see an aggressive drop down to fourteen thousand five hundred eighty points, then I think that we are very likely to see a bounce back up from that area. And in the case of the bulls, fifteen thousand one hundred fifty points is the next task for them. We are talking about a former area of resistance in which the bulls of the Nasdaq one hundred failed on nine occasions. We are also talking about a former area of support that already acted as such back in late August. And this previous area of support and resistance is coinciding on the four hour chart with this 180 SMA. And obviously, guys, maybe tomorrow, maybe on Monday, in the, it depends on the price action of the NDX. We could also see a death cross on the four hour chart, which is going to be very, but very negative. So the bears are also in total control of the Nasdaq 100. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the first stock of this video, AMC Entertainment. And in the case of AMC, we saw a tiny squeeze in today's trading session. AMC went up today 7.09% and it closed today's trading session at $38.06. So let me pull up here the one day, one minute and take a look at this good old tiny squeeze that we saw in the case of AMC. We saw a massive spike of the volume of AMC. So I think that the message that the apes are sending out there is positive, guys. So AMC found support today at 33.74. And after having made some sort of double bottom formation over here, we could make the case, maybe we saw this uh, squeeze. This was a, yeah, a a gamma squeeze or a tiny squeeze, whatever you want to call it, up to 41.78. Remember that 42 bucks is a very important area of overhead resistance in which the bulls of AMC failed today once again. So as of now, guys, the most important task of the bulls of AMC is going to be once again holding $38 as lower support, which happens to be a previous area of resistance and support. This is a previous area of support back from early June and also a previous area of resistance in which the bulls of AMC failed on two occasions back in August. So that's the most important task we can clearly see over here, the, still see over here the, the death cross that I told you guys about in yesterday's video. And let's see what happens tomorrow, guys. Do you guys know that AMC is a stock that, uh, let's say, 
uh, trades on its own momentum, regardless of whatever the markets are doing when AMC trades on good volume and momentum. So the most important task, obviously, for the bulls tomorrow is going to be reconquering 42 bucks. 42 bucks is a previous area of support that acted as such back in early September, but it also acted as such on two occasions back in early June. So very good job for the bulls of AMC. The, the situation, the technical situation of ANC was looking very, very ugly today near 2 p.m. Eastern Center Time and suddenly we saw a massive a spike and as of now AMC is trading once again above $38 very good job for the bulls of AMC and the second stock of this video good old Context Logic Wish and today I got a lot of questions about Wish so which went down today 2.33% and it closed today's trading session at $5.46 and only out of curiosity, guys. Curios curiosity, there you go, out of curiosity. I want to take a look at how, how far is Wish from all-time high. So let me see over here, 84%. Wow. If I Can you figure, guys, if we had a crystal ball and we, uh, you know, were able to... Uh, you know, to, to find out if Wish is going to be a super mega cap company and we were able maybe to load up on Wish as of now, that would be unbelievable. So what can happen in the case of Wish? In my opinion, guys, this is an absolute no touch until the bulls of Wish manage to reconquer $6.08. $6.08 is a previous area of support that acted as, uh, that acted as such back in mid August and on top of that we are talking about a former area of lower support that coincides with the 50 SMA and the 4 hour share so this is a no touch the relative strength index of which is at 30 points by the way this is an all time low for the stock of this company so i think that we still have more room to the downside and in the and for the most part which is going to depend upon whatever happens with the 10-year treasury yield. Obviously, this is a stock that trades on higher multiples. So this is a no-touch, guys. I think that if the bulls of Wish can reconquer $6.10, and if we see a process of consolidation slightly above that area, slightly above the area of lower support, the previous area of lower support that I just told you guys about back from... This was back from uh, mid-August. Then that might be a buy, guys. Uh, if if I happen to confirm from a technical standpoint that Wish started out a process of consolidation, as I just said, slightly above six dollars and ten cents, I could be interested in picking up some shares at six dollars and thirty cents. In which case, my price target is going to be the next important area of overhead resistance for Wish near seven dollars and sixty-seven cents. In which case. I would be able to make a 17% profit. This would be a very, but very nice trade. And in the case of $7.60, we are talking about a former area of overhead resistance back from early September. And also about, we are talking about a former area of lower support that acted as such, that acted as such for the stock of this company in May and in, in May and June as well on four occasions. So watch out for Wish, guys, and be careful. I think that uh, yeah, taking or starting any trade on Wish below six dollars and ten cents is extremely, but extremely risky. And the third stock of this video is going to be the talk of the town today. Bed Bath and Beyond, and oh boy, did the stock of this company get killed today? Yes, it did. So Bed Bath and Beyond went down today 22%, and it closed today's trading session at $17.27. And I got skin in this game, let me show you. I own 100 shares of Bed Bath and Beyond, and I was taking a look at the earnings report of this company. And they are pretty much, so this is my, they are pretty much saying that uh, they missed on earnings uh, because of disruptions in supply chain. So they are saying like, okay, this is not our, uh, don't, don't blame it, don't blame it on us. That's what, that's the message that they are trying to deliver. And I think that Sherwin Williams actually lowered 
their commercial guidance yesterday, saying the same thing, that they are dealing with a lot of uh, disruptions in supply chains, and therefore they are going to be unable to meet the uh, estimates of the analyst for future revenues and, and, and future, uh, let's say, profit, all right? Okay, in the case of BBBY, I own 100 shares at an average cost of $24.61, and as of now, I have an unrealized loss of $729. So what happened in terms of earnings? So let me pull up here the live news tab, and they missed in a very ugly way, guys, when it comes to EPS. So let me see if I can find over here. Okay, so EPS came in at four cents down from 50 cents year over year, a big miss over there, and sales came in at $1.99 billion, missing the estimate of $2.06 billion. However, guys, something that caught my eye and that is worth uh, pointing out over here is that um, I, was, I, I checked on uh, BBY's uh, for, uh, Q1 uh, earnings report and they reported a negative cash flow. And as of now, and taking into account the report that uh, came out today, they are delivering positive operating cash flow. So this is positive, guys. So they turned, or they, let's say that they posted a negative operating cash flow for Q1 of this year. And despite the fact, and despite the fact that they missed on both EPS and sales, they are delivering or they are posting a positive operating cash flow. And obviously they lowered guidance because they are saying that there are a lot of disruptions out there when it comes to supply chains. Let me see if I get the news over here. No, I didn't have the news handy. So let's move on and go over the technical analysis. Okay, the main thing that I want to point out here, guys, uh, before... Uh, carrying out the technical analysis is that this dip was backed with a lot of conviction. So check this out. Before the earnings report came out, Bed Bath & Beyond was trading pre-market at $22. Then we saw a massive drop down to $15.54. So this was a 32% a drop. Jeez. But after Bed Bath & Beyond hit $15,054, it started to go up and up and up and up and up and up in a day in which the markets went down a lot. So people bought this dip and this is a very positive sign for BBBY, no doubt about it. When it comes to the position that I just showed you, I need to pull up here the three-year chart. So in my case, I am going to keep a close watch on BBBY, guys, slightly above $16.78. $16.78 is a previous area of resistance in which the bulls of BBBY failed in December of 2019. Yeah, you heard correctly, December of 2019. And we are also talking about a former area of support back from April of 2019, and on top of that, and on top of that, when we say sixteen dollars and seventy and seventy cents each, we are uh, we are talking about a former area of support and resistance since a long time ago. That coincides with the 180 SMA on the four-hour chart. So if I happen to see a process of consolidation slightly above sixteen dollars and seventy cents or seventeen dollars, and obviously also depending on whatever the markets do as a whole, I am going to be tempted in order to pick up probably 100 more shares in order to average down my current position. And if I happen to have 200 shares of Bed Bath & Beyond, I am going to start selling covered calls until I can close this position at $27. That's for the most part my price target in the case of Bed Bath & Beyond. And I think that I I am, going to, I am going to have to average down my position, guys, because as of now, my average cost, I forgot, I think it is $224. Let me see over here. So $24.61. So yeah, I think that I am, I am very likely 
through Perseus 100 more shares of Bed Bath and Beyond. If I happen to purchase 100 more shares near $17, then I am going to end up having an average cost of, uh, let's say, $19.50 or $20. So if I happen to close this trade, at the price that I just told you, near $27.30 or $27, bucks, I am going to be able to make a 27% profit. This would be a very nice trade. And in the case of $27-ish, which is the price target that I am, that I am aiming at in order to close this trade, $27 bucks is a previous area of support that, I, that already acted as such for Bed Bath back in early August, also back in mid-April, but also back in late March and early March as well. And on top of that, we are talking about a former area of support that coincides with the 180 SMA on the four hour chart. And mind you, I am also talking about when we say $27 ish, we are also talking about a former area of overhead resistance in which the bulls of Bed Bath failed on two occasions back in late May. So watch out for Bed Bath, guys. Starting to consolidate slightly above $16.70 or $17 bucks because that might be a sign that the bulls are going to start to gather momentum in order to make a push higher. And the last stock of this video is going to be Lee Cycle. And the ticker symbol of the stock of this company is LICY. Lease cycle went down today 6.65% and it closed today's trading session at $11.70. And this is a company that I found kind of interesting. You guys know that I am investing at a long term in NEO and Tesla as well. And this company wants to recycle lithium ion batteries guys so let me read here for you so lease cycle holdings engages in lithium ion battery resource recovery and lithium ion battery recycling in north america the company was founded by aj uh, Kochhar would be uh, i must be butchering this name and timothy johnson in 2016 and is headquartered in yeah i mean missy Mississauga, Mississauga in Canada. I, I, I obviously butchered the name of this, of this town or, or of this city in Canada. Sorry about that, uh, uh, my dear Canadian friends. <laughs> okay, so I found this company very interesting, and we got news today that let me see over here, Lee Cycle stock. Okay, so they got a 100 million investment from a Koch Str Strategic Platform. So let me read here for you guys. So I think that this company issued some convertible bonds and they were given $100 million, correct? So Koch Investments Group will invest $100 million in lease cycle holdings by purchasing convertible notes. Okay, perfect. Fair enough. The note will have an initial conversion price of approximately $13.43. So, uh, I mean, uh, at any at some point in time, we're going to have a drop in this cycle, obviously. Okay. Pearly cycle, common share. The notes will mature on September 29 of 2026. We're talking about 2026, guys. This is like five years out. So, we all know that the future of the world when it comes to uh, vehicles is going to be electric. And someone is going to have to recycle the batteries uh, the lithium ion batteries of electric vehicles, guys. So watch out for the cycle. So as of now, I'm, I am not thinking about investing at a long term on the cycle. I just want to take a trade with the stock of this Canadian company. So watch out for $11, guys. $11 is a previous area of support that acted as such on two occasions back in June. But we are also talking about a former area of support back from late January. So if tomorrow... The stock of this company happens to pay a visit down to $11.17. I am going to be tempted, guys. I'm not going to lie. If I happen to confirm, first of all, that the stock of this company found a good support at $11 in order to pick up some shares of lease cycle, in which case my price target is going to be the next important area of overhead resistance near $12.62. $12.62 is a previous area of overhead resistance in which the bulls of the stock of this company failed back on August 10 and they also failed back on July 2nd. So if I were able to take this trade the way that I am describing it, picking up some shares at $11.14 and mind you, 
the relative strength index of Lee Cycle looks very, but very healthy at 52 points, so we can make the case that the stock of this company is neither oversold nor overbought. So picking up some shares at $11.14 and selling out of these shares, of these shares at $12.52, I could be making an 11% profit, guys. This would be a very nice profit, and we can clearly see over here, guys, a golden cross. You guys can see how the 50 SMA on the 4 hour shirt already crossed above this 180 SMA. So I think that this chart, this, the chart of this company looks very bullish and I am going to be waiting, no doubt about it, for Lee Cycle near $11 per share. And with Lee Cycle, I am going to wrap up the video. Thank you very much for your attention and thank you very much for hanging out with me once again. Remember and keep in mind, guys, that here on the Bilingual Stock Market channel, we are posting stock market update videos Mondays through Thursdays, three or four hours after the market closes. So if you want to get all of the notifications, of all of our videos in a timely manner you have to be subscribed to the channel but you also need to activate the notification bell right up there follow us on instagram as well guys at bilingual stock market and remember that this is the bilingual stock market channel the youtube channel in which we talk about the markets but we do it in english and spanish as well so you can pick your preferred language but most importantly this is the youtube channel in which we know that the wonderful world of wall street is not for geniuses it is for entrepreneurs just like you guys and myself my name is alvaro and i will see you guys once again on sunday peace out